background and prepare for prepare to listen for our uh, presentations. Okay, so welcome back to our uh, fifth uh, Serpi Biennial uh, meeting. No? So, um, as uh, Dr. Reyes mentioned in her opening remarks, no, we are now entering the fourth industrial revolution, which is an era marked by uh, massive advancements in, uh, in uh, digital technologies. No? And these technologies have a profound impact in the way we live and work. And in order for us to better understand how we can take advantage of uh, uh, these digital technologies, no, as well as their unintended consequences, we invited three experts. Two of them will be uh, talking about um, inno innovations in education delivery. And, uh, and also on uh, the use of social media, how, how we can harness social media in uh, knowledge dissemination. And our uh, third speaker on the other hand will um, discuss um, intellectual property in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. So allow me to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker, who will discuss the topic Innovations in Education Delivery, Open and Distance E-Learning in the Open University, is the director of the Multimedia Center of the University of the Philippines Open University, or UPOU. She has been with the Open University since 2003. Oh, sorry, since 1997, no? Where she handled various assignments, including research associate, coordinator of massive open online courses on child's rights and protection, course tutor, and also project coordinator, among other things, among other uh, assignments. She rose from the ranks to become UP Open University's director of multimedia center beginning this year, beginning 2018. In 2015, she received the UPOU Gawad Chancellor for Natatanging Research Extension and Professional Staff. And prior to working at UPOU, she worked at the International Rice Research Institute. Actually, that ko siyang office mate. She is a personal friend. I'm really so very glad na nakapunta siya ngayon. Um, she also worked at um, the Isabella State University and the University of the Philippines at Los Baños as a faculty member, radio station supervisor, and editorial associate. Friends, please welcome Ms. Uh, Director Luisa Helesan of the UP Open University. Thank you, Dr. Shiar. <laughs> Sheila. So we go back a long way. <laughs> Since college days, younger batch as I mean. Okay, good morning, everyone. So uh, as Dr. Sheila said, I'll be sharing our, our university's experiences in the adoption of 
um, various innovation in the delivery of open and distance e-learning. But before that, um, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Reyes and Dr. Shari for inviting me today to be able to share what we do in the university. So like um, she said earlier, I have been with the Open University since 1997. Um, the university was um, established in 1995 and then before its second anniversary, anniversary I got in uh, after a short stint with the um, International Rice Research Institute. So since 1997, I have seen and experienced the different changes and evolution in the way UPOU delivered, practice, and um, applied open and distance education. So from analog years to the digital years. So I'm, I am a digital migrant and is still is um, migrating because the developments in ICT is continuous, so endless. Siya. So yung the way we have to learn and learn and relearn new things um, lifelong. Kaya nga po ang aming tagline in the UP Open University is lifelong learning for every Filipino and lifelong learning for all. And then kanina nabanggit nga ni Dr. Reyes, may mga common terms kami ang PIDS at ang Open University. So yung term na unlearn, relearn, and then op, op, um, education 4.0. Kung ang PIDS is PIDS 4.0, kami education 4.0. And then yung term na open access. So now, um, I'll give a short background first about UP Open University. So, um, UPOU is one of the constituent units of the University of the Philippine System. It was established in February 1995. And it is the only constituent unit of the UP system that is mandated to offer degree programs and continuing education courses through open and distance learning. It was established to provide Filipinos with wider access to quality UPOU, UP education since wala kami talaga ding uh, limit as to how many students that we should um, accept per course. Basta ang kailangan lang is that the student or the applicant should be able to uh, meet the admission requirements. And then um, we also provide education beyond borders. And the UPOU also aims to contribute towards upgrading the quality of residential instruction in the university and in the whole country as well. It is by developing, testing, and utilizing innovative instruction materials and technology and sharing this with other colleges and universities through cooperative programs. The educational technologies that UPO employs has evolved and continues to evolve through the years, influenced foremost of all by the changing characteristics, needs, and circumstances of its distance learners. In this paper, I shall be discussing the different technologies that were used and continuously used by the university in, de in delivering academic and student support services to our learners following the different generations of distance education that, that was identified by Dr. Melinda Bandalaria in a um, journal ar article that was published by the Atabasca University in 2007. By the way, Dr. Bandalaria is the current chancellor of the Open University. So the first, the first generation of distance education in the Philippines is the use of radio for education. It is more popularly known as school on the air or SOA. The first farmer's SOA was aired in 1952 in Iloilo. This is to teach farmers with new technologies for farming. Basically, SOA was used for non-formal education 
and as one of the extension activities of an agricultural university, just like in the case of um, UP Los Baños. Through its Radio DZLB, it aired SOA starting in the late 1960s with uh, farmers out of school, school youths and housewives in the rural areas as um, target audience. And SOA are considered as the forerunners for modern distance education in the country. Um, actually, UPOU started with UP Los Baños. It started with the program called STUDY, or Science Teaching Using Distance Instruction. This was, this was in the um, late 1980s. STUDY aimed to upgrade the knowledge of science and teaching skills of secondary school teachers teaching science and mathematics. Um, there was a study then that many of the teachers teaching science and mathematics in secondary schools are not trained to become teachers of science and mathematics. Um, yung iba daw, physical education yun natapos. So, and then they were assigned to teach science and mathematics. So medyo mahirap for them. And at the same time, bumababa din yung quality ng education ng ating mga secondary school uh, students. So they came up with this study, and then the, the first students were teachers from Laguna and Mindoro. So they received their lessons through lectures aired over Radio DZLB. Um, this way, the students don't have to travel all the way to Los Baños, and they listen to the lectures, which are aired on an appoint appointed time that will not interfere with their work as teacher and with their responsibilities as family persons. Then with the second generation of distance education, this was when the graduate degree programs were started uh, being offered through distance education. So teaching was uh, mostly done using print-based learning materials and then you um, the students have to attend a face-to-face -face interaction once a month in a UPOU learning center. Uh, during the early or the early days of UPOU, we have about 21 learning centers all over the country. So, and then during those days, kasi, um, 95, 1995 to 1997, we ha only have about two programs. So Diploma in Science Teaching, and then the other one is um, about Research and Development Management. So medyo concentrated yung, or yung, yung characteristics of the students are pare-pareho. So mas madaling mag, magkaroon ng learning center at mag-conduct mag ng tutorials in a learning center. And then, Yung, the learn the face to face interaction are um, are managed by a trained tutor so the trained tutors we have tutors from UP Los Baños UP Deleman UP Visayas kung nasan yung learning center but we have learning centers like the um, uh, University of Santa Isabel in Naga um, Cagayan State University so though uh, there are some teachers from those cooperating SUCs, we have um, trained tutors from their institutions. But if there are times that we don't have um, tutors in the area where there, there is a learning center, the UPO, you fly in the tutors once a month. But kung hindi siya posible due to weather condition, um, medyo nag-evolve yung tutorial session. The, the tutorial session were conducted via the uh, landline phone. So may teleconferencing kaming ginagawa for a time during the um, second generation. And then, this face-to-face um, -face session is, what make this um, different is that um, 
the tutorial serve as a venue for academic consultations, discussions, and clarification. When a student comes to the learning center for a study for the face-to-face -face session, it is expected that the students have read the modules. So the, tu the tutor will not um, do any lecture. What she will do is to um, ad address the, the questions, the clarifications, and um, any inquiries of the students regarding the module the assignments or the projects that the students have to do. The, um, F, the F2F is also a venue for socialization among the students. Because normally, nakikita lang sila once a month. So, dati kasi, you have this alienation issue with the DE because you study on your own. So, with the face-to-face -face session, yun yung ina address. And now, um, this face-to-face um, -face session is also being done in some universities, even elementary schools and uh, high schools abroad. Dito sa Philippines, I think may mga ilang universities doing this. And they call it flip classroom or the blended learning mode. Also, um, under the second generation, the UPOU used um, video materials, audio lessons, in cassette tapes. So I'm not sure kung marami pang familiar sa inyo sa cassette tapes, VHS tapes. <laughs> and nagkaroon kami ng television program to supplement the printed learning materials. Medyo, um, ano yun? Magastos yung television program kasi we had to buy an uh, airtime. Kahit na sabihin na for free, Siya binigay for a while and then mahal siya, so we have to let go of that. And then, yung the video and learn video and audio materials are available in the learning center. So, meron din equipment doon and the students can come anytime na re, uh, free sila to uh, view the, the video or listen to the um, audio materials. And then for the third generation, um, dito na na-introduce yung or online learning management system or LMS. The adoption of LMS was influenced by several factors. Since UPO programs offerings have increased and have become diverse, the, the demographic characteristics and needs of DE learners located in the various areas in the country have become more heterogeneous they are more geographically dispersed. Thus, sending trained tutors to these learning centers are, have become um, inefficient in, in, in terms of resource utilization. So, nung dumami na yung programs, minsan sa isang learning center, tatlo lang yung naka-enroll sa science teaching, dalawa lang naka-enroll sa mathematics teaching, so research and development management, wala pang sampu. You have DevCom, you have social work, and then com computer science, what, um, nursing, hospital administration. So kumokonte per course. So kung lahat, let's say in that learning center, you have 15 courses offered. So magpapadala ka linggo-linggo or buwan-buwan ng tutors, tapos tatlo lang estudyante. So, doon na namin na um, isip na kailangan, gumamit na ng learning management system and at the same time, what influenced us to do that was that yung ICT is, um, is already not concentrated, not just in the city, but uh, outskirts, although medyo mahina pa rin ang internet. And then, yung mga Estudyante din, na iba na yung kanilang demographics. So, iba-iba na yung work. So, iba-iba na yung oras. So, they want it, they want um, more flexible learning. Learning anytime and anywhere. But, um, print-based learning materials all still played a big role in DE. And, but, the tutori tutorials now are done online. UPO started using IVLE or the Integrated Virtual Learning Environment, 
which was um, developed by the National University of Singapore. Pero ang ginamit namin yung free software nila. Kasi medyo mahal yung um, licensed software, yung mga latest ano nila, um, version. Through the LMS, the distance learners connect with their faculty in charge and online classmates. Asynchronous class discussions or recitations were done via the LMS. The faculty in charge would pose a discussion or a question, and then every member of the class is expected to answer the question. And sometimes the faculty in charge would encourage or would um, make it a part of the grading system that students have to answer three or five um, discussions posted by their classmates. This way, um, the engagement among classmates are encouraged. And um, at, the, at the same time, yung kind of socialization mas ma, mas intense. And then the use of email messaging have also become popular in this, pay, in this space. In fact, um, distance learners who are geographically um, located away from each other, they do collaborative work through emails. Uh, na experience ko po to kasi nagdiya ko dahil um, nag enroll ako sa isang master's class ng dev ng OU kasi nasa information office ako that time. So when I have to explain what is distance education, na explain ko siya based on the the brochure that I prepare. Pero yung first hand experience wala po ako noon so sabi ko teka magdidiin nga ako so mas ma maintindihan ko at mas ma-explain ko at mas maintindihan ko rin yung mga estudyante when they have complaints about um, online learning and then the fourth generation um, the fourth generation saw the birth and increasing use of the terms e-learning or electronic learning M learning or mobile learning and the uh, uh, ubiquitous learning. Dr. Bandalaya called the fourth generation generation as the empowered phase. The use of ICT contributed to enhancing the teacher's knowledge on the subject matter being taught and knowledge and skills also on teaching practices via online. The teachers are empowered to have flexibility in shaping and structuring the learning environment in their classes based on the learner's prior knowledge and experiences. On the other hand, the students were able to have more control of their learning environment, like how to learn, when to learn, where to learn, and what to learn. Uh, under this generation, the UPOU explored and used variety of technologies appropriate for distance education. And then, under the fourth generation, the UPOU shifted to another learning management system. Ito yung tinatawag na model. Uh, I'm sure yung iba sa inyo familiar na with model. Um, this is an open source software. We chose this because we can tweak and reprogram the LMS based on the requirements of the university and based on the capacity of the students. And then we called our virtual classroom the UPOU My Portal. Aside from having the asynchronous interaction in the My Portal, the My Portal also became a place where students can access all the course materials. And like before, pinapadalhan pa namin sila ng printed materials at saka yung mga video materials ay kailangan pa nilang puntahan sa learning center. This time, we upload everything in the model. Then, it also the place where they can submit their assignments and projects and take quizzes and exams. And aside from the, learn, uh, the LMS, some of our faculty members um, try to use social media for education, like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
because many of the younger generation are more uh, adept in using Facebook. They find it easier to navigate the Facebook. So for habang uh, nando sila sa phase of transition, uh, from Facebook to model, nag-start yung ibang faculty namin to use the Facebook. Kasi parang mas nakita din ng iba na mas engaged yung mga estudyante. Kasi very, uh, they find the Facebook as an uh, informal, uh, very familiar nga sila the way, uh, the sa navigation, sa pag-navigate doon, tsaka kaya more engaged sila sa kanilang pag-aaral. And then also with the proliferation of smart mobile phones, tablet, uh, the availability of data connection, the mushrooming of the internet cafes, everywhere, uh, mobile and ubiquitous learning have become easier for our students. And then also, we started having synchronous discussion. We use um, different chat and video conferencing applications. Such, yung mga, nagsimula kami doon sa mga libre, like Google Hangouts, Skype, Messenger, uh, FaceTime. And most recently, we um, got uh, license for Zoom. Um, we find Zoom kasi uh, mas, parang mas mabilis yung interaction, and then we can record the, the interaction um, for an unlimited number of hours. And then with Zoom, we can connect. Well, according to the uh, description of the Zoom, it can connect to up to 100 points. So we have not yet um, experienced um, connecting with 100 points. Hanggang 10 points pa lang yung aming nakoconnect. And okay naman yung connection even um, when we are connecting with our students abroad. So also with the use of video conferencing, yung mga estudyante na, namin who are based abroad, who have to take their oral exam, um, presentation of their thesis or uh, dissertation proposal, or even proposal of the thesis and the dissertation, we, have to, uh, we do it online. We also have web streaming or live streaming. We have special, we conduct special lectures, colloquia, seminars, and master classes, and even a few face-to-face -face tutorials uh, every now and then. With the web streaming of li and or live streaming, we avoid marginalizing students who are not able to attend those events on site. And aside from the web streaming, we keep the recorded video online. So those students who were not able to view the event on real time, they can watch it. And even the students who were able to view it, they said that it's a big help to them because they can review what was uh, shown earlier. Okay. We also, uh, recently we developed this UPOU networks. This is our reposto repository, online repository of multimedia materials. So, all, um, all the content of this UPOU networks have the, the Creative Commons license. So everyone can access the the multimedia materials for free and um, it is not just for our students but all those interested students teachers uh, anyone interested to um, to learn about uh, uh, any subjects or any uh, topic and we also encourage teachers to use our multimedia materials in their uh, residential classes And given the varying needs and capabilities of users of the multimedia learning materials in ad and in adherence with the United Nations Sustainability Goal number four, that of ensuring inclusive and quality education for all, and also of the UNESCO's Learning for All, Guidelines on the Inclusion of Learners with Disabilities and Open and Distance Learning, 
the UPOU is now employing various measures that will make its multimedia resources universally accessible and inclusive. Although we find it uh, very challenging given that under the multimedia centers, we only have, we are only five in the office. Okay, so we do the production, the editing, and then with the um, um, universal accessibility and inclusive program that our chancellor wants us to do, we have to make sure that the video have, has a podcast or an audio version. The hardest part is doing the transcription and doing the captions and putting the subtitles. So we are still on that stage. And we, we are hoping that we can, we can add more people to the um, center to do this because um, the editors are already complaining about it. We have also developed our own MOOCs or the Massive Open Online um, Courses. The UPOU MOOC is called UPOU Model or Massive Open Distance E-Learning. Offered under the UPOU Model are the different courses developed by UPOU and are aimed at providing unlimited participation and open access via the web. All these courses are offered for free. Okay. Um, so, we, I think, uh, so those um, interested to, to learn how to, to convert their courses to DE mode, we have um, several courses under model that is offered right now. So you can check our uh, website or the model website. So it's for free. It's um, one of our uh, public service um, projects under the UPOU. And since UPOU is also named as um, by the, by the, under the Distance Learning Act of the Philippines, we are tasked to provide um, assistance to, to test the and to CHED in developing programs or courses that will help other SUCs develop their own uh, distance learning materials. Okay. And with the use of um, the ICT, our reach has uh, widened. We have students not only on, in the Philippines, but also from other sev uh, 70 countries. Not just Filipinos, but also some are um, foreigners. Our nurses, they're taking their master courses under the UPOU. Filipino nurses from the Middle East and hanggang Europe, meron tayong mga estudyante. And then, okay. So, because of the ICT, we can practice, all uh, our UPOU e-learners can practically attend their virtual classes anytime and anywhere using any hardware. So, tablet, uh, laptop, desktop, although some are using mobile phones, but I think it's quite difficult to do that. Or maybe I'm just a digital migrant, that's why I'm having a hard time. <laughs> okay. But um, keep in mind that when using technology for education, the technology should be pedagogically sound and socially driven. We should not use technology for the sake of using technology or sometimes to be branded as high tech. We should always consider our objectives, the capability and capacity of the university as well as that of our learners. And here are some questions that you may consider before applying a new innovation or adopting a new technology for education. K1, would the technology narrow or widen the digital divide? Can the university and the student afford to use the technology? Are the users ready for the new technology? Do they have the means to use or access the technology? 
are they equipped with knowledge, with the knowledge and skills to use it? Uh, is the technology appropriate for education? Will it promote learning? Will it encourage student engagement in their learning? Another, what are the measures needed to prepare the users? We have to provide them technical support, the way we did when we started with the learning management system. We, had, we put up a um, technical support group who will answer the questions of the students with regards to how to use the LMS. And we also came up with an, a video or an AVP, an instructional video, teaching them how to use the uh, learning management system. So this one, the, ter the tech support part is the uh, challenging one because um, the university is still a small university and we only have two people then, so they have to shift 12 hours, do the shifting 12 hours a day and then later we have to distribute the, um, the work to as many people as we can, although hindi sila part ng tech, tech, tech support, parang we have to train, we, I, uh, I, I was able to do it for a while. Walang, especially uh, during the first month of the start of the semester, yun yung maraming increase, maraming questions. And also during the final exam. Yan. Okay. And then another question, Alder, are there other alternatives that can be pursued? Baka ma merong mas madali, merong mas mura, merong free na, uh, merong freeware na pwede magamit, mas accessible sa estudyante at sa university. So, are this, these are just some of the questions that we must address when we are thinking of using technologies for education. At UPOU, we use a combination of technologies from different generations of DE when applicable. The array of technologies that shall be used depend on the features of the course, the capability of both the university and the student, and the needs and characteristics of the students. Um, in 2005, um, the, UPO the UPOU is already fully online then. But then, we had to revert to the second generation of DE for a particular group of students. Um, we had to use printed learning modules and conduct a once a month face-to-face -face tutorial. Because this group of learners, um, they came from a, pro um, a town in the province of Quezon. So dun sa town, um, dadalwa lang yung, uh, yung computer shop, tapos mahina yung internet connection, and then the computers are actually being used just for computer games <laughs> and typing. And then our students are um, public elementary school teachers. Uh, majority of them don't even know how to boot a computer. So, hindi talaga pwedeng mag-online. Mag but, um, this is a cooper uh, cooperative project between the local government unit of, Ke of Mauban, Quezon and um, uh, power generating company because uh, they wanted to improve the uh, quality of education in Mauban. So, they were, they gave scholarship to 50 teachers so, but much as they want to give them computers at during the first year, um, may resistance from the students kasi nga yung learning curve, curve nila medyo mas mataas. So, we had to revert to uh, DE, generation two of DE, or the second generation. And then, up, uh, right now, we have this course, the Organic Agriculture non-formal education. So, this course is actually fully online, but the teacher or the professor said that he want it to offer in a blended mode because he wants the students to go to an organic farm or to, to different organic farms in Laguna 
to show them how each farm is doing organic farming because um, they, um, the style or the technique can be different from one farm to another. And this is also a skills-based course. So uh, it is necessary, the, the professor said that it is necessary for the students to see what is happening in the real farm. So, pinapagalitan niyo yung mga estudyante namin noon. Kati, kami rin, mga taga-OU, na nalalaman niya na nag-farm uh, bill. Bakit hindi daw mag-aral ng totoong organic farming? Okay. okay. So, um, meron din mga estudyante, they cannot attend the face-to-face -face session kasi malalayod. We have students from Davao and then the, farmy, the farms being visited are in Laguna. So what we do with video document, what is happening in the farm, and then we show it online. So para walang nama marginalize na estudyante. So um, as, I've, I, as I've said earlier, as provider of education, we need to be flex flexible and open with regards to innovations that we apply for education. We need to look into what will be best and beneficial to the majority of our students and yet, at the same time, think of possible ways to reach those who might be left behind. As, as one last tip in applying innovation for education, whatever technology that you may think of applying, I'd like to share this quote. There can be infinite uses of the computer and of new age technology. But if the teachers themselves are not able to bring it into the class and make it work, then it all fails. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Hilisan, for uh, sharing uh, your nuggets of wisdom on the use, on how to use technology in uh, delivering education. So, Director Hilisan has flagged important questions to us uh, um, that we have to consider if we are contemplating to use technologies like uh, yun yung e-learning yung model, no? If you are to, if you would like to convert our courses to. Uh, the e-learning, the e-learning mode, and this is particularly uh, um, important for mga colleges and universities who are present today. No, so sino po ba dito ang mga nasa university na meron na po tayo mga e-learning uh, courses? Meron pa, meron na po ba? Oh, great! Oh, saan? Ah, ang CLS yung meron na. Okay, that's that's very good to hear. Okay, so if you ha if you would like to uh, know more information about uh, how UPOU is doing it, and if you would like to learn from their courses, how to convert your courses to e-learning mode, well, Director uh, Hilisan is here, and we will also have an open forum later. So please uh, reserve your questions for the open forum. Now, our next presenter will talk about uh, how to harness social media for knowledge um, dissemination. And let me give a, um, a short introduction about our uh, uh, next speaker. Our next speaker is Mr. Patrick Salamat, who is the former communications director of the Department of Education, where he uh, promoted the use of social media to engage stakeholders. He is also a senior partner at Cognition Creative Communications, a public relations and marketing consultancy that specializes in social media-based communications projects. Currently, he is a consultant at the Asian Development Bank, assigned to NEDA to help in promoting the Philippine Development Plan and Ambition Natin 2040. Among the communications efforts he is involved in is the ECHO and MIA series. Na, well, follower ako nung, ano eh, nung Echo and Mia series ni Patrick. And the Echo and Mia series is an attempt to simplify common economic concepts for radio and social media. Patrick, or Mr. Salamat, is also a lecturer at the Asian Institute of Journalism and Communication, 
where he conducts seminars on maximizing social media for government and nonprofit organizations. And what we are about to hear today is a condensed version of that seminar. Actually, I am a graduate of that uh, seminar being uh, <laughs> two years ago, being conducted by Patrick at the AIJC. Also, Giselle, my, uh, my office mate, also uh, took that course. And it is a very... Binebenta ko ba yung course mo? Hindi naman. Okay. Well, now it is time for us to hear about, you know, this topic on harnessing social uh, media for knowledge dissemination. And I, give, and I now give you Mr. Patrick Salamat. Thank you. Ayan, good morning. This is a... Hindi nga siya condensed version ng ano eh, kasi mas madetalye yung seminar na ginagawa namin. And it's an old title, but I think it's, ano, it's, it's appropriate. Um, si Ma'am gave, uh, said something about, ano, about digital natives and then digital migrants. The thing about social media is that it's not the technology. Social media is basically what people do with the technology. Kasi iba yung ano eh. Um, alam mo kung ano yung kung ano yung pwedeng gawin, pero minsan, hindi natin alam kung how the whole thing develops. Text was supposed to be just short form messaging. Dati nga, libre pa yung text eh. Nung una lumabas yung globe, di ba? Libre yan, unlimited yan. Hindi nila alam na sa Pilipinas, yung pala yung magiging primary mode of communication. Kaya naging piso-piso na yung ano eh, yung per text, di ba? So anyway, um, social media is now the new standard. Diba? News stories are broken online. Pag may bagong balita, dati inaabangan natin sa dyaryo, paglabas ng unang edition ng dyaryo, or dun sa evening news. Ngayon, hindi. Kahit alas dos ng madaling araw, pag may nangyari, lalabas yan sa Twitter, masyashare yan sa Facebook. Traditional commercials are now launched online. Nung araw, lalabas sa dyaryo umaga, diba? Abangan ninyo, mamayang 7.30, ang bagong commercial ng Palmolive. Ganon. Tas all, re, all, all TV stations ipapalabas yung commercial. Ngayon, hindi. They're all launched online. And the metric that they use is the number of views on YouTube. Feedback now is faster and with wider reach. Dati, pag sa may reklamo ka sa sinulat sa dyaryo, sulat ka ng letter to the editor, di ba? Pag ano, i-approve pa yun ng editor, lalabas pa yan. So, ang tagal ng usapan. Ngayon, pagkalabas na pagkalabas ng article, at siner sa Facebook, magko-comment yung tao, may magko-comment sa'yo, may kaaway ka na. Di ba? In five minutes, you have found a new enemy online. Di ba? So, feedback is faster. But para sa atin kasi, dun sa mga nagpo-post ng articles, it's useful feedback. It, it lets you know how people think. My favorite example is ano, kasi hindi mo alam kung ano yung importante sa tao. My favorite example is sa DepEd. Diba? So we were, I was there during K-12 transition. So it was, diba, ano talaga, matrabaho yan. Um, so ang problema namin, diba, bilang, bilang, bilang taga-DepEd, ay resources. Diba? So classrooms, teachers, curriculum, ganyan. Yun yung pinoproblema namin. Tapos sa social media, may mga nagtatanong. Diba? Dahil po meron ng senior high school, ang tanong po namin, kailan na po ang JS Prom? <laughs> Ine, diba? Tama, di ba? Iniisip namin. <laughs> Ini, di, hindi namin pinoproblema kasi tinitira kami na classroom, teacher, ganyan. May budget ba tayo? Pero oo nga naman. Since may junior high school tsaka may senior high school, kailan na ang JS Prom? So ang sagot dyan ay bahala kayo. Basta sa public school, bawal ang required na collection, di ba? So ang sinabi namin, yun, you can, ang end result nun is an actual memo clarifying the conduct of junior and senior prom. So, pwede sa senior high, meron sa junior high. So, that's okay. So, it affected policy. Kasi hindi naman namin iniisip talaga yun eh, bilang DepEd. But because of social media, at hindi mo siya makukuha, if you're, you're in the DepEd central office, even if you're in the regional offices, hindi mo malalaman na yun yung ano. Di ba? Sa mga PTA yung usapan na yun eh. Sa mga principal yung usapan na yun eh. Nung araw, Bago mo malaman yun, kakausapin mo muna yung mga principal. Yung mga principal, nakakausap malang pag summer, pag pupunta silang teacher's camp. Hindi, di ba? Pag inset, pag may training na. Pero ngayon, direkta kahit yung estudyante mismo, pwedeng mag-comment dun sa Facebook ng DepEd. So kahit negative yung ibang comments dun, okay, maraming comments dun, <laughs> negative, 
hindi namin pinapatay yung comments. We don't, we don't turn off commenting because it gives us insight. And that's the thing about social media. Um, ah, hindi. Uh, pag may nagmumura, kasi ano, ang, uh, the way we do it sa DepEd, para kang teacher. So magsalita ka, ganyan, oras na magmura ka, ibablock kita. Diba? Kahit yung tone ng pagsulat namin, para kami yung teacher. Yung ibang mga, ano, yung ibang mga, mga agencies, iba-iba yung style nila, di ba, ng pag-address sa mga tao. Anyway, in social media, the traditional gatekeepers are being shunted aside. So traditional gatekeepers, these are editors sa TV and yung producer. Wala na. Dati kasi, sila yung nagsasabi kung ano yung importante. And that's important because, um, uh oh, eh, ano siya, pinag-iisipan mo eh, di ba, what, what actually helps. The problem is, minsan problem siya, minsan ano siya, minsan, minsan advantage siya, minsan disadvantage. Um, another example, that DepEd example that I like giving is, uh, before, naalala niyo yung kumalat sa YouTube, yung salutatorian siya. Tapos nagre-reklamo siya na ano, na, di ba, hindi siya, niluto ng admin. Hindi yan ano, hindi yan magiging balita nung araw. Diba? Reklamo yan sa regional office, gano'n, tapos. Um, pero dahil kumalat siya, nabaligtad yung proseso. So, nandun, so, pabaligtad siya. So, alam muna ng presidente ng Pilipinas. So, yung presidente, tinawagan yung Secretary of Education. Yung Secretary of Education, tinawagan kami. Tapos, tsaka namin siya si Noel. That was two days of my life wasted. Dealing with something that shouldn't have been a problem in the first place. But, it's ano eh, it's a it, it it went viral. Diba? So kumalat siya sa social media. So ang nalaman namin, tapos pagpunta namin sa school, nakasaray school, wala nang nag-aano. Walang gustong kumausap kahit media, kahit DepEd, hindi kami kinakausap. So what we found out was, yun nga, it's a parochial school. So private school siya, hindi siya public. So hindi rin hawak ng DepEd yun. Uh, tapos ang ano pala, ang valedictoria ng mga parochial school, uh, libre ang tuition sa UST. So kaya pinag-aawayan nila talaga yung pagiging valedictorian. So pag salutatorian ka, 50% discount lang. So pera talaga yung pinag-ano. Yung merong ano, merong malalim yung pinaghuhugutan nun. Hindi lang siya ano, hindi lang siya pride. Di ba may actual na kinabukasan niya yung ano, yung may cost implications yung kuhan. Yung pagiging, hindi pagiging valedictorian niya. But what we found out was, una, it's, a, it's something that resonates with a lot of people. So maraming na ano, maraming na dadaya sa ano, sa pagiging honor, di ba? Tapos uh, it's something that we, we we don't. But the nice thing about that is again it resulted in a, a an actual order or a memo clarifying standards for ano, for for graduation honors, mga ganyan. So it affects policy. It's able to do that. Tapos hindi natin magagawa 'yun kung hindi lumabas si ano, si lumabas sa social media. Tapos ngayon Dahil doon, di ba, konektado doon, user-generated content dominates the web. Dati kasi, ang content ng website ay mga pawang professional lang ang gumagawa. Ngayon, hindi. Kahit sino pwedeng gumawa. Anyone with a computer and, and an internet connection can actually put up a website or a blog, di ba? Which severely lowers the quality of content out there. Di ba? So, 90% of everything is crap, di ba? 10% lang yun. Pero, um, it makes it more important for people like us who actually represent organizations, educational institutions, research institutions, to make sure na hindi tayo natatabunan ng noise. Diba? Na-establish natin yung dominance natin, na-establish natin yung credibility natin bilang source ng importante, credible information. Okay? So, social media kasi is a participatory layer, ang gandang definition, that allows for the self-selection of experiences. That's the thing about people on social media. They're the ones who select what they want to see. Dati, if you watch TV, someone else has selected the news for you. Diba? Ngayon, you're the one who selects what you want to see. And because of the things that you choose, the things that you like, and the things that you follow, yung algorithms ng mga ano ng mga social media sites inaayos nila so that they keep feeding you the things that you like di ba so paminsan-minsan mag-like ka ng hindi mo gusto hindi para hindi maging echo chamber yung ano mo yung feed mo sa Facebook di ba mag-like ka rin ng ano mag-comment ka rin dun sa mga hindi mo gusto para oh hindi siya maano oh, para balance 
Kasi nagkakaroon ng, ano, nagkakaroon ng echo chamber yun. Puro yung ka-opinion mo lang yung makakausap mo. Tignan nyo yung friends ninyo sa Facebook. Di ba? Some of them, kala mo, di ba, nasa na itong mga to They're still active. Pero kung hindi mo masyadong nilalike yung mga post nila, hindi siya lalabas dun sa feed mo. Kasi if you have 900 friends, for example, hindi naman yung 900 na update niya, hindi naman lalabas yung lahat, eh, di ba? So it's just the people you talk to most of the time. So if you click on your friends tab sa Facebook, di ba, ang hindi naman alphabetical yun eh. It's, it's arranged according to the people you interact with. So yung mga first couple of pages yan, yun yung mga lagi mong nilalike, lagi mong kausap. Pero yung mga iba, buhay pa yun, di ba? Hindi mo lang, hindi mo lang kinakausap. So you, you, you selected or you chose not to select them. Okay? So it's a new standard because everyone is on social media. Everyone meaning, di ba? Hindi naman lahat, di ba? Hindi naman lahat may internet. Pero those who are not on social media are dependent on media. They're influenced by people on media who still look to social media. So yung mga nasa liblib na probinsya, na radyo lang yung pinapakinggan. Wala silang social media. Pero yung announcer sa radyo, sa social media din kumukuha ng binabalita niya. Kaya nga minsan mali-mali yung mga pinagsasasabi sa radyo eh, kasi kinukuha lang sa social media. So that's it. If you win social media, then you win all of media. Yan. Social media is cheap. Yes, it's virtually free. Diba? Tapos yung paid options niya are still cheaper, are inexpensive compared to traditional media. Traditional media is expensive. Diba? It's half a million at least for thir a 30-second commercial on TV. So ganun siya kalaki. Mas malaki na nga ngayon pagdating sa prime time. Hindi ko na alam kung ano yung rates. Sa social media, you can go for as cheap as nakikita niya, diba? boost your post. Sa Facebook, boost your post for 200 pesos, for 500 pesos, ganyan. Kaya. So if you spend something like 5,000, 10,000 pesos on social media, which is like, di ba, um, split second on TV, marami ka nang, marami ka nang mararating. Okay? So yun, uh, it's virtually free. Paid options are inexpensive compared to traditional media. It's a tool in your communications arsenal. Okay? So I think the problem is some people don't treat it that way. Some people, di ba, think it's, wala, extra lang siya. Yung iba naman, masyadong bentang-benta yung social media sa kanya. Pero hindi nila naiisip or hindi nila kinoconsider na isang tool pa rin yan. It's a medium. It's just one of the most, to use a term nga nina, ubiquitous, di ba? It's an ubiquitous medium. Yeah. That is a tool in your arsenal. So what do you do? You use it to spread messages, you use it to amplify other channels, and you use it to gather feedback. You don't treat it like an online newsletter or yung pag may in email ka na press release, ikaka-copy-paste mo lang dun sa Facebook nyo, tas yun na yun. Diba? Hindi. Pinag-aaralan yung laman ng social media. Hindi siya yung basta ano lang, basta i-echo mo lang kung ano yung mga usual na pinapadala mo. It's a different medium. So, diba? so there's a different way of, of engaging people there. Diba? A radio script and a TV script are different. Diba? Same as, uh, in the same way that a social media thing, social media posts are supposed to be different. Okay? Um, ito yung ano eh, maganda siya. This is from Pointer Institute. And it's the new news cycle. Dati kasi ang news cycle, ikot lang. Diba? It's a cycle. Ngayon, nagigina siyang ganon. Infinity na siya. Kasi oras na lumabas yung balita sa social media, merong magko-comment. Tapos yung comment na yan, minsan nagiging balita din yung comment na yun. Ikot siya. <laughs> diba? Kukomment na sila. Tapos diba, babalik dun sa, ano, sa news source. So it's interactive news, di ba? Articles, newscasts, editorials, radio programs, they go here. Di ba? Nung araw, letter to the editor lang. So yun na. Ngayon kasi pagdating dyan, boink, lalabas pa. May comments ng users. Uh, biglang may magkukomento sa Twitter may susulat ng companion piece sa blog, reaction piece, merong email, ganyan. Ikot na siya. So it's a never-ending cycle and something that you have to, you have to try to, uh, most communications people try to take control of it, but if you don't, um, if you don't, if you're not able to nip it in the bud, then it will go out of control. Perfect example would be NEDA. Diba? So yung, di ba, 
Walang sinabi ang MEDA na 10,000 ay maginhawang buhay. Walang sinabi. Pero lumabas eh. Tapos lumabas, may nagkomento. Mga senador nagkomento. They commented on the news uh, on the newscast that that gave an erroneous quote. Mali yung quote, di ba? Nagkomento sila doon. Dahil nagkomento sila doon, yun na yung balita. Di ba? Tapos nangyari yan, gabi. So kinabukasan, may rally na sa NEDA. <laughs> di ba? Alas 7 yung balita. Eh. 7.30 yung balita. Eh. Di ba? Matapos nung balita, uh, Channel 7 yan. <laughs> Tapos nung balita, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Nung midnight, madaling araw, meron nang nagahanda, meron nang nagkokomento. It was being discussed. The following morning, yun na. Di ba? Tapos nawala na yung original na ano. Di ba? The, the original context is has been has been has been lost di ba tapos umikot-ikot na siya di ba may hindi yun na nga di ba patol lang ayo mga tao di ba pumapatol sila pagpatol nila sila na yung pinapatulan and it became quite di ba doon sa kabilang circle na siya eh. iba na yung pinag-uusapan ngayon nawala na yung unang <laughs> yung unang nagsalita hindi mo na pinapansin kasi nag-aaway-away na sila di ba so it it's a it's a whole new thing all together um, so yun, that's the problem, that's the difficulty with social media. Hindi mo siya kontrolado kasi mga tao yan eh. At hindi mo alam, hindi mo kontrolado yung utak ng mga tao. You can only influence them to do something. And it's easy to influence people if you do fear-mongering. But if you start explaining things, this is our problem. If you start explaining things, people will tune out. Why are people now afraid of vaccines? I was with DOH like a few weeks ago so ano daw from 95% vaccination rate sa ano ah, sa Mindanao to um nasa butuan ako like 3 weeks ago um 55% na lang dahil takot yung mga tao there's a measles outbreak in region 3 dahil dahil dun because people are afraid and they saw it on social media they saw it on Facebook and they will not bother to read your long explanation <laughs> on Jonas Salk and how vaccines actually work. Hindi na. Hindi na nila iintindihin yan. Basta sa kanila, yung sinasaksak ng taga DOH, baka mamatay ang anak ko. Tapos. Yun yung madaling kumalat sa social media. Ang chismis, madaling kumalat sa social media. Diba? Pero yung actual na balita, mahirap. Yun yung problema natin. Because it lends itself to short messages na may hatak emotionally. Yung katakot, tawa, lungkot. Diba, bakit lahat ng commercial ngayon, kahit ng Jollibee, <laughs> ng Acer, computer, diba, walang kinalaman sa ano, dun sa produkto. Diba, puro mga mag-shot ang nagbe-break <laughs> at nagkikita. Diba, bakit? Kasi yun yung sineshare ng tao. You can talk about how delicious a, a, a chicken joy is, but diba, people will watch something about, ano to, yung pilot, <laughs> it's it's a story, It's a it's a it's a story online uh, that that people will share, and it has very little to do with the product, but because it has an emotional pull, they will share it, diba? So yun yung ano natin, yun yung challenge para sa atin. Paano mo lalagyan ng hugot si ano? Dati nagagawa yun, di ba? Merong ano? May wala na yun si sexy statistics. Si PIDS ba yun, PSA, di ba? Meron dati si Sexy Statistics. Okay? So, virality and meme ability matter. Ayan. Yung virality, it's a state. Okay? So, you don't, you don't create something viral. Something, you create something and it might go viral. Di ba? So, walang, ano, walang formula or walang foolproof formula na magiging viral yung isang bagay. Meme ability means something can be remixed, can be made into a meme. Diba? Yung memes are things that, 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 that short, easy ideas that can get transferred. So madali siyang ano, picture siya, tapos lalagyan mo ng ano, lalagyan mo ng comment or whatever, tapos um, aanahin mo na siya. Uh, most recent meme would be yung ano, nakita niyo na yun si ano, I love your Filipino accent. <laughs> Say something, ah, diba? The picture ni sa Dexter's Lab yun eh, pero diba? So ano siya? Um, if you got something, if you're able to make something that is memeable, diba, 
pwede siyang ano, pwede siyang mag, mag, mag viral. The problem is yun, sharing outruns fact checking. People do not bother to check kung tama siya o hindi. 'Di ba? Pag sinare nila, if it's something that they think, 'di ba, ang tawag ni ano ni si Stephen Colbert, 'di ba, the comedian, the TV show host, 'di ba, calls it uh, truthiness. 'Di ba? The quality of truthiness. It's it seems like the truth and it agrees with my beliefs, so I share it. Diba? Yun yung, ano, yun yung idea. Tapos the problem is, it's digital, hindi siya nabubura. So the digital records resurfaces even after you debunk it. Diba, na-disprove mo na, babalik na naman. Ngayon, diba? Tignan nyo na lang, eh, ang dami-dami yung bumabalik. Diba, meron lang makahu kayo ng lumang, ano, lumang post. Diba, kasalanan niya ng... Facebook memories eh. <laughs> Bigla lalabas yung ano, bigla lalabas. Oh, di ba? Three years ago, you posted this or you shared this. Mali na siya, pero di ba? She share mo ulit. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? What are we supposed to do? Di ba? So, I'm not gonna go into details, but uh, one is you have a plan. You have to have a plan. You have to include social media in your communications planning. So, if you're planning, uh, if you're doing stuff for radio, for TV, or whatever, isama nyo si social media. Kung ang talagang medium nyo lang ay yung website ninyo, make sure that has a social media component. Diba? One of, the, one of your, your metrics is to drive people to visit the website. So you have to do that differently. You have to post something that is different in social media so that it gets people to click. And remember that a lot of people will not click because they have free Facebook on their cell phones. Oo, hindi nila na, kaya nga, kaya nga pinakamakalat yung Facebook eh. Dahil may libre sa kanya. Tapos yung libre, hindi mo ma, uh, pag kinlik mo, hindi siya pupunta kasi wala siyang internet talaga. Na-discover namin yun dati sa DepEd kasi meron kami listahan ng walang pasok. Tapos dati link lang siya. Tapos ang dami nagtatanong, saan po walang pasok, saan po walang pasok. Ano ba mga to? Tapos naisip namin, may nagsabi sa amin na pag kinlik nila, hindi nila mapupuntahan kasi naka-free data lang sila sa Facebook. So simula noon, talagang sinusulat na namin yung ano. Oo, tapos nalalaman mo rin minsan yung problema eh. Wala pong pasok yung ano. Yung, walang pasok ang NCR. Tapos nabuta, sa Pasay po ba may pasok? Diba? Hindi ka kasi pasok. Hindi ka pumapasok, di ba? Kaya hindi mo alam kung saan yung sino yung kasama sa NCR. Pero, so hindi na kami yun, di ba? Yung mga nagkomento sa kanya, yung nagreply sa kanya. Pumasok ka kasi, di ba? Hindi mo alam na nasa NCR yung Pasay. So, yun. wala na, di ba? You don't even need to do that. Eh, kasi, di ba, millions, 4 million, ano eh, 4 million ang followers ng DepEd eh. At nadadagdagan siya ng 5,000 followers every time may bagyo. Kasi, hindi, para malaman nila, di ba, kung may ano. Tapos, the Facebook, uh, the, the parents and teachers are mostly on Facebook. The students are on Twitter. Mas pambata yung, ano, mas pambata yung, yung Twitter. So, anyway, uh, you have a plan. You have to have a plan. You have to include social media in your communications planning. You try to maintain a presence. So, hindi yung tuwing meron lang. Regular dapat. Kung kaya nyong araw-araw mag-post, kahit pa uulit yan, even if it links to the same article but you're highlighting a different quote, a different idea, try to post every day on, 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 your, on your Facebook page. You establish a Facebook page and then try to explore other social media channels. Ang suggestion ko sa mga tao, kunin nyo na for your organization, kahit hindi nyo siya gagamitin, mga Snapchat, or whatever new thing there is, kunin mo na para kasi hindi na makuha ng ibang tao. Baka gagamitin pa siya to, to do fake stuff eh. Di ba? Lalo na kung hindi kayo ma-ano, hindi kayo ma-verify ma ni, ano, ni Facebook. But you have to have Facebook. And you have to have Twitter. Twitter is, hindi siya kasing popular ng Facebook, but the reporters are there, the politicians are there, the celebrities are there. So, kaya kailangan mo mag-Twitter eh. Dahil you influence the people who influence media. Facebook, diretso sa tao yung kausap mo. Pero pag Twitter, yan, dyan mo kausap yung politiko, reporter, artista. These are the people you need in order to spread your message. Okay? Tapos, ano pa? Increase followers. Try to increase your followers. Pay if you need to or if it's possible. The problem with government is that mahirap i-reimburse. Hindi mo alam kung paano nyo ipoprocure. 
yung pag ano ng social media. So you end up paying more because you have to get uh, an agency to do that and the agency has to go through your back and di ba? Hindi na ano, hindi, hindi na tinatiyaga yung mga ano yung mga agencies. Ambition for Neda was nagboost siya because it was expensive. Malaki yung ano, malaki yung budget for that. It was an entire thing. So kasama doon yung social media component. Pero kung for social media lang sa inyo baka hindi. But we're trying that out now. Sa Neda meron sila ngayon eh. They they have a lotted budget for social media boosting. So I don't know how that will go. Babalita ko na lang. Babalita na lang namin sa inyo, di ba? Kung kung paano siya. Minsan depende rin sa kawa ninyo kung paano nila ituturing yung one, yung 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 social media na spending. But you can pay. That's how Facebook makes money, di ba? They don't make money. They will not charge you for anything. But if you want to increase your followers, if you want people, if you want to reach certain kinds of people, then you have to pay. That's the reality that you have to face. And it's still cheaper than going on TV or paying for a slot on radio. You have to target those who need your information the most. And that's the thing about social media. It's easy to target people geographically, uh, anong tawag dito? educational attainment, uh, gender, maraming, ano, maraming, maraming factors and you can fine tune it. Diba? And the nice thing about it is mas maganda yung metric. Sa TV, Ratings lang ang basis mo eh. They assume that several million people watch the TV show. But you're not sure if they're able to see your commercial. Diba? Nagsi-CR ka pag commercial eh. Nililipat mo sa ibang channel pag commercial eh. Pero sa Facebook, pag tinignan mo yan, sa YouTube, alamawa, 10 seconds yun eh. Pag, pag, pag hindi ka, binibilang lang nila as a view if it's 10 seconds or more sa Facebook. Ay, sa YouTube. Facebook nga yung madaya eh, kasi 3 seconds lang kinakount na nila as view. Pero binago na nila yata yun yan. But that's the idea. People, the people who have seen your post have actually seen it. If they click like, then malamang. Unless, oo, oh, ayun nga, um, ang problema lang, hindi mo sigurado kung naintindihan nila yung sinulat mo. Pero at least alam mong nabasa nila. Okay? So target those who need your info the most. Um, coordinate and build alliances with fellow agencies, tayo tayo, diba? And the academe, if you want to spread the message around, you share each other's posts, diba? Kung wala tayong budget pang ano, <laughs> pang boost, at least mag share share tayo, diba? Maghahati hati yung mga, magsasama sama yung mga followers natin. Tapos, if you have a specific topic in mind, specific thing that you want to advocate, then create a campaign for that. Okay? The last thing you need to do is to engage your audience intelligently and honestly. Diba? Pag may ano, kausapin nyo ng maayos, kahit hindi sila maayos kausap, diba? Huwag kang bababa sa level nila. Diba? Huwag kang makikipagmurahan sa kanila. Establish guidelines on commenting and how to deal with that. The thing is, the bigger the organization, the more full-time uh, social media management is. So either you, you need to assign people to do that, na most of their office work does that, or you outsource, you hire people, JO, you hire an agency, in order to manage that for you. Okay? So yung final, ano, ito yung mga pwede nyo gawin. One, you create pages, not just accounts, ha, hindi tao, so create a page. So iba siya, yung paggawa ng Facebook page um, from, from a Facebook account. Then you develop an overall social media policy. Meaning, ano yung, one, ano yung dapat nating gawin sa social media? Paano tayo sumagot? Ano yung mga ilalabas natin? Sino yung in charge dito? May budget ba tayo dito? Yun, assign personnel to handle social media for you. Whether it's internal or external, as long as there is someone. If you're going to be serious about it, then you have to put resources there. Plan your content. You can share from the central office. You can curate. Pag sinabing curated, yun yung mga hindi sa inyo galing. Pero pinipili mo at sineshare mo. So from partner organizations, from the academe, from stuff in the newspaper. Um, you have to plan your content ahead. Hindi yung twing, hindi siya parang sa'yo. O, oh, planado dapat yan, at least a week before, kung paano mo ilalabas. Hindi parang yung personal mo lang na pag may nakita ka, ay maganda, isi-share ko. Pero pag sa ano, pag page ka, um, paplanuhin mo kung kailan siya ilalabas. Engage your audience, meaning, kung may nag-comment, 
sagutin niyo. Kung may nag-private message, sagutin niyo. And then, the most important thing is you adjust based on feedback. And the nice thing about social media is, yun nga, di ba, mabilis ang feedback, so dapat tayo rin mabilis tayong mag-adjust pagdating doon. Okay? So mamaya po, may open forum kung may tanong kayo mamaya. Yun lang po yung tanong. Maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. Yun. At sana, maayos yung social media natin. Salamat po. Thank you very much, Patrick. So uh, he has given us uh, useful tips ano, on how we can harness social media in our respective uh, offices. Well, at PIDS, we have incre increasingly used social media, yung Facebook and Twitter, no? Uh, for us to better communicate with our stakeholders, to um, further uh, disseminate our the findings and recommendations of PIDS studies. And I think it's, uh, we, have, we have seen that it's really an effective way to, um, to uh, disseminate information. So, dun sa mga network members who are not uh, still into social media, Hopefully, ma, ma encourage din kayo. But ang sabi nga ni Patrick, no, you have to plan it on how you can incorporate it into your um, communication strategies. Okay? So our next present, our next presentation is a very important one, because um, with um, the knowledge economy, the network economy, and the digital economy come with um, all sorts of risks, no? Uh, risk, particularly in terms of uh, intellectual property, data security, um, and um, even data protection. You know? and, our, um, and we are very privileged that we have with us today no other than the Director General of the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines to share with us her knowledge expertise and um, experience on the topic intellectual property in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. Allow me to give a short introduction. Attorney Josephine Santiago is the Director General of IPOFIL, a post or the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines and this is a post that uh, she assumed in October of uh, 2015. She has an expansive and intensive experience in the field of um, the intellectual property system that traverses two decades in government and in the private realm. In government, she was former Deputy Director General of the Intellectual Property Office from 1999 to 2002, Director of the Technology Application and Promotions Institute of the Department of Science and Technology from 2006 to 2008, and an Alternative Dispute Resolution Practitioner at the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines from 2011 to 2015. In the private sector, she was an intellectual property rights consultant and legal practitioner, educator, and researcher. Friends, I now give you attorney Josephine Santiago of the Intellectual Property of the Philippines. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am likewise privileged to have been invited before this August uh, body. Um, the, uh, these are no ordinary um, organization, as I see the membership, and I went over the, the names of the institutions participating in this um, event. I saw that I am. I readily agreed to speaking before, before you because I know that intellectual property should also be in your consciousness. So, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, Dr. Cecilia Reyes, hindi ka. Sorry. Shello. Sorry. Uh, Pete's president, distinguished speakers guests, fellow policymakers, friends from the academe, ladies and gentlemen. Isang malikaing umaga sa inyong lahat. So, um, I, uh, I'm happy to have uh, listened to the previous speaker, at least 
uh, perhaps a large part of it, no? He was speaking about um, the use of social media by the, uh, by the office. This is not part of my speech, but may I just mention to you what we did in the office, considering that we have, we are unknown. What is intellectual property? So um, there's a huge mountain to climb for us to be understood and uh, appreciated so that the time for ignoring intellectual property should be a thing of the past, especially for your organizations that uh, have um, uh, somehow, I know that there are some intellectual properties within your organization being created, you influence, um, you are the policy makers, you influence sectors in your own respective fields. So we you see here, dapat copyright, hindi copy paste. We embarked starting this year, yeah, uh, when um, I created um, the communications and marketing unit, which we now call the ADVOCOM, Advocacy and Communication Unit. Um, we know that, um, well, our vision says that uh, to uh, promote an intellectual property, uh, conscious Philippines, intellectual property, conscious Philippines, in a democratized, development-oriented, and um, democratized, Angelo, <laughs> D, 3D, demystified, yeah. Demystified uh, environment by 2020. 2018 na po ngayon. That vision of the office was created or formulated in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. My predecessor had adopted that. And uh, when I came in, so um, we were trying to say, oh, it's now coming to be 2020. What are the metrics? Have we achieved this vision that we have created, that we, you have uh, created? So, well, uh, admittedly, we were busy with other things until somebody said there should be a baseline study. So we're now <laughs> preparing the baseline study to compare it by uh, when we reach 2020. Although this should have been done when this was first launched. Anyway, uh, so, what we did was create the um, Advocom, as I mentioned, and uh, we also, be, um, in tandem with that, we um, got a consultant, an outside consultant for uh, creating an, a strategic communication plan for us. And um, by, in April, we started out with those statement shirts. Can my two staff here come over, please, and show your shirts? One is dapat copyright, hindi copy paste. And then, ano pa isa? Ange Angelo, your shirt, please. Walang forever sa fake. So, um, this was done. This was, uh, we did this uh, in April during the IPR month. April of every year, starting 2017, had become the Intellectual Property Rights Month, signed by President uh, Duterte. And we have different uh, statement shirts. Who got lines? Nung una po, since hindi naman po ako millennial, no? Alam nyo naman yan, you can see it. So, uh, ano ba yan? Dapat, ano? Dapat provision of law or something like that. I mean, more serious ones, no? But I was, uh, but I was over, um, overruled by millennials. I was also saying, can we have a ta uh, coffee table book for this on the history of intellectual property? They, you know, my, my advocate just laughed it off. Ma'am, hindi na po uso ang coffee table. What? Sabi ko, Bakit hindi? Eh, dapat nando sa table pag may nag-uusap, may nagkakape. Ma'am, social media na po ngayon ang trend. So, against my will, but this had been 
the result of our um, debates in the office. And uh, yun nga, when, when we, lo we launched this in April of 2018, it became a hit. In fact, gusto niyo magkaroon? Susuot ba ninyo? Baka naman pantulog lang nyo. Promise, ha? Oh, sige, parating na. <laughs> parating na. So, pero hindi ko alam ko ano yung darating, no? Kasi mabili po eh. Hindi, 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 hindi namin binibenta. <laughs> hindi ko binibenta. Uh, medyo may problema nga rin ako sa procurement eh. Sabi nung, nung aking uh, accountant, Ma'am, Meron ng coffee, eh, meron ng uh, uniform allowance sa mga tayo. Pag binigyan po natin ng ganyan, sobra-sobra na po. Sabi ko, you know, you have to change your mindset on this. We have a program for awareness. Pasok mo to sa awareness program natin. Yung expense nito is, di ba, programa para sa awareness, hindi para sa uniform. So I think the, 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 the thing that is needed now is really a change of mindset. Diba? Uh, so ito po, naging patok po to. We went around UP on the, um, what day was that? I think the second week of April. And we, had a, we went around the Oval um, wearing our statement shirts. And where did we get the hugot lines? I told my, my advocate, ask our 300 plus employees, launch a campaign, a campaign, ask them, mag-submit sila. Tapos, i-ano ninyo, i-ayusin nyo na lang, alin ang pwede. So, ito ay contribution po ng mga tao ko, tao namin, and uh, uh, that was April. Dumada, hanggang uh, we had our planning last week, again, sabi ko, ang pina, kasi the, the advocate was saying, we're now running out of juices, can, uh, can you please, I said, Ang dami, oh, 300, 400 uh, tao, um, workforce, let them submit. And then dami mo nang pwedeng uh, pagpilian. So, happy po sila. They were, uh, my, my, the, the uh, workforce was happy that they have been consulted when they, when we launched this. And uh, bukod po, po, pa po dyan, meron pa pong mga... Uh, collaterals kami ginagawa. So, and then also, pagdating po sa social media, yun na nga po. We have an FB page, we have LinkedIn, we have Twitter, and uh, what else? Instagram. Coming? Instagram is coming. Meron na? So, um, in fact, I've been asked, may contest ba? Mabibigyan lang daw, may condition po ang, ano, ang, aming, uh, ang aming group na yung mag-like po ng Facebook page namin, <laughs> bibigyan po namin una-una, papakita po ninyo nag-like kayo, may t-shirt na kayo. At saka, ano, di ba mamaya? O, oh, sige. Sige. Okay. Na on to my uh, on to my lecture ito po sometimes um, we're also moving towards i was also asking um, my technical people kaya ba nating mag chatbot chatbot so uh, kung may mga queries as of now it's almost real time verified ano po kami ha this is a verified page pakita mo nga please angelo yung yung <laughs> Yung acting, ano, yung may, alin ba yung may verified page? May check daw eh. Ayun. So, okay. So, uh, ha, may mga nagla-like na? <laughs> Baka maubusan ng t-shirts eh. <laughs> Nilike na. Sige po. Uh, Baka may pang boost din kayo. Nag-boost din po kami for a while nung nag... Um, pero I thought pag binoost ka, nag-boost pala, nag-subscribe ka lang ko tuloy-tuloy. Events lang pala yon Per event. So, pero parang mura lang naman po. Something like mga 5,000? Mas mura pa? 
Depende, yun po. So, targeted audience. So, tama po. Uh, sana po, may, uh, this, my pre the previous speaker, <laughs> resource person, um, sir, I forgot, I, I, Mr. Patrick, salamat. Pakibanggit po yung sa amin. Na, gusto po ninyong i-cite na example. Ito po yung ginawa ng intellectual property. Thank you po. <laughs> Para po makilala talaga kaming kumisa, kumakaway na po. Hello, ito po intellectual property. Oh, importante po sa buhay nyo. Eh, wag po ninyong ignore. Papakita ko sa inyo bakit. Let's go na to the next. Ay, ito, ano, one big fight uli. Ano? Whether you're gearing up for one big fight or suiting for UP fight, remember that university logos or slogans may be trademarks owned by your schools. So make or sell your university branded merchandise with caution. Sumas um, sumasali na rin po kami sa mga sa mga hot topic. At uh, <clears throat> kung meron pong uh, sumasakay na rin po kami, albawa ngayon papasok po ang uh, election. Proactively, we're saying, baka po, those who wanted to use music, slogans owned by, um, by copyright owners will please contact the, the owners of copyright uh, material so you may, so that uh, we may not have any problem later on. So these are things that we try to uh, make ourselves known. And uh, nap napansin ko po, meron din po kaming ka-IP-han. Tama po yung dinig nyo, ka-IP-han, hindi po ka-IP-han. ka ip -han. So, uh, mga, I think, uh, four times a year or even uh, more, depende kung meron po kami i-announce, we noticed that media picks up our, um, our press releases or the issues that we raised when it comes to enforcement, pag counterfeit at saka pirated goods po yung news namin, ceremonial destruction, we landed at least in, in the front page uh, one, one time uh, last June. Um, but the other things about IP, so we are being drowned by other well, sorry to say, less important news, articles about criminality, about um, show business. Hindi po nila nakikita na meron pong mahalagang um, uh, sistema. There's an important system in, in the government, in government, that takes care of intellectual property rights, creations of the mind which are to be protected. So can I now go to the main speech, please? So, <laughs> outline. Historical underpinnings of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, we'll do this quickly, Fourth Industrial Revolution, relevance of the intellectual property protection system in the 4IR. Number four, uh, opportunities, challenges, and risks related by? Hmm. <laughs> related to <laughs> 4IR and its emerging technologies. Um, I think this is specifically for was the, the uh, communication sent to me that you are more interested in. But uh, in this topic, we'll discuss the rationale be behind the IP system. The 4IR in the context of the IP system, in the spectrum of uh, the IP system, and then how are we dealing with the 4IR from the perspective of the Intellectual Property Office. Then some key takeaways and six recommendations for further policy consideration. I don't know if I have time to cover all this. Am I the last speaker, ma'am? Yes. And then, so what does it mean, ma'am? <laughs> okay. All right. Ne uh, big data, yes. You are already, um, words like uh, big data, cloud computing, all these things um, are not new to you. Internet of things. Dati internet lang. Bakit may internet of things na? May internet of uh, vehicles. Meron pang ganon. 
Um, and then we have uh, blockchains, virtual aug augmented reality. And then we have 3D printing. Uh, that's something that you are familiar with already, I suppose. Micro and uh, nano satellites, unmanned automated vehicles. Okay? Welcome to the fourth industrial revolution. Here, this is the a revolution where we see, touch, and use. Use now. Used to be, used to be the stuff we dreamed of before when we were little. The robot maids, holograms, self-driving cars, hovering boards, and drones of our favorite cartoon. Uh, characters when we were little uh, has come into reality. I remember when I was in grade four. I'm not ashamed to tell you the year. <laughs> Late 1960s. I was in grade four or grade five. When um, my father, when I would, you know, since grade one, uh, my father would fetch me from school and, um, for lunch and then go home, take lunch, and then bring me back in for the afternoon session to school. For siguro mga twice or three times during the span when I was in grade school up to uh, high school, I, I think I, was already, I could already manage to take the jeep, jeepney. Um, he, he forgot to fetch me or f fetched me late. The, the students for the afternoon session were already coming back and I was still waiting in the front of my school, waiting for my father. And um, at that time, I had wished that that phone in the, in the school, which is the, near the reception where I was standing, would ring to, to tell me that, hello, I'm coming. Hello, I was just late, I had a meeting. Or hello, I have been home, I thought I, you were at the back of the car, something like that. But uh, it did not happen and um, it turned out that he had a meeting. And uh, so, that, so as I said, mga tuwai siguro nangyari doon. The other one was also um, an important event where I was supposed to receive a uh, um, some recognition in school during recognition day, diba? At, and unfortunately, it was also the day when my brother in, in um, kindergarten was also graduating. So, sabay, sabayan, same time. So, where would my parents go? To my recognition uh, awarding or to my brother's uh, um, graduation for kinder? Apparently, nakalimutan din nila na meron akong recognition. Nandun sila sa, award, sa, ano, sa, grad, sa kindergarten graduation. And that was, I felt, I felt hurt. Sabi ko, kinder lang yun eh. Wala nga award yung brother ko eh. Tapos ito, may magpipin ng medal sa akin. Hindi ako na, nakalimutan ako. So those times, sana merong telepono ako sa katawan na masabi sa akin na O masabi ko sa kanila, malapit na, ready na kayo, punta na kayo. And I did not really have the, and when it came, when my wish came in um, the 1980s, when cell phones have started to be manufactured, wow, sabi ko, ito yung naalala ko, na anecdote sa buhay ko. Na I, had, na I wish that there would be a cell phone. Uh, no, not, I, not even a cell phone. I, I call it a telephone in, in, the, in the body so that we could, um, I, could, I would know the whereabouts of people who are important to me. So, um, so this thing, uh, another thing, another incident. 
When I was also having my, um, my, uh, when I was heavy with my second child, um, I could not buy, I mean, dresses, for example, that are, bakit puro pa ulit-ulit itong, itong design na to? Parang divisorya lang ata, <laughs> nagbebenta ng mga ganito. Sana may mall. Naku, saan merong uh, uh, prenatal, pregnancy, uh, no, um, uh, clothings. So, um, tapos there was also a time, Again, when I was in grade school, when uh, I remember my mother preparing calamansi juice in a Tupperware every day of my life for, uh, for my baon. And uh, the, my, our canteen would have no um, water. Diba? You go to the fountain. And then um, they were selling only in the canteen soft drinks. Eh, ayoko ng soft drinks. Hindi kami lumaki sa soft drinks. Lumaki ako sa kalamansi juice prepared by my mother every morning. So I said, sana merong bote ng tubig. Sana binibenta ang tubig sa botelya rin. And I feel lucky that at this time, all these small wishes that I, I've made, nakikita ko during my lifetime. So it means, it's not only me thinking about things, innovation. Diba? So all of us are capable of all these things. And only that, maybe not all of us have the means, the resources to really innovate, create. Pero meron tayong mga ideas. All right. So next slide, please. So we look at the first industrial revolution, ito, the use of water and steam to me mechanize production. That was in the mid 18th century. Okay? And then the second, which began in the mid 19th, uh, past 19th century to 1930, the second industrial revolution is basically uh, on the use of electricity for mass production. Ito rin yung lumabas yung mga cars, airplanes, dahil may assembly line. Okay? Mass production. And then the third is the use of electronics and IT to automate production. So hindi lang assembly line na simple na uh, human resources, uh, human in, in, uh, intensive, but ito, may automation na. And that was the third industrial revolution um, in the um, mid-20th century, 1960s onwards. And then here is the, uh, here we are in the fourth industrial revolution, which is a fusion of technologies, a fusion or combination of technologies that is blurring the lines between physical, digital, and biological spheres, blurring the lines. You would have clothes, you would have watches, hindi pala nasuot yung Fitbit ko, that measure, that measures your heartbeat, your steps, your uh, calories intake. So um, you are wearing an instrument or a, a device or a gadget that measure something within your system, which is what? The biological system that we have. And this is now um, uh, seen on the digital sphere. Next, please. So, um, the four IR, that we are living in today provides a profound systemic change wherein technological advancements are causing a major blur, as I said. But what? An, at an exceptionally exponential rate, transforming 
something as minuscule as our genetic makeup. Alam na natin kung paano yung DNA natin. And not only our human DNAs, almost everything on the DNAs are able to, are, we are able to now determine or come up with. To large and complex aspects of our lives, such as industries and even systems of governance. So the four IR started at the turn of this century as an offshoot of the third. For its heart are computers and computer systems which are capable of performing complex operations and dealing with processing of large volume of data or big data which, which gets bigger and bigger and bigger by the second, by the minute, by the day. I cannot stress this point enough because it is only through the availability of data and proper analysis thereof can we policymakers create policies which better, quickly, efficiently, and effectively respond to our clients' needs. So according to Mr. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, the confluence of data with massive computational storage and cognitive power will transform industry and society at every level, creating opportunities that were once unimaginable from health and education to agriculture, manufacturing, and services. The 4IR allows for the increased availability and interaction of groups of extraordinary technologies. Applications of these technologies may initially center in clusters of technologies that interlap with our biological, physical, and digital, digital spheres. So we have artificial intelligence and robotics, additive manufacturing, neurotechnology, Technologies, which is a set of technology based on the principles of the nervous system. Biotechnologies, virtual and augmented reality. New materials, energy technologies, and many other future applications that only the human creativity and inventiveness may discover. Through humanity's continued efforts at technological progress, now artificial intelligence is capable of machine learning and deep learning. They now can recognize patterns and react and make decisions in a human-like way. For instance, when we draw images, artificial intelligence understands too, and it is able to recognize what was drawn based on data that it has been fed. Or when you watch Netflix, it knows what you have watched, and therefore, it will suggest in the future what you may want to watch, because your interest had been picked up. Same with Spotify. Same goes for Google. YouTube and other social media sites as they know what you search and, rec and give recommendations based on your search history. Even the ads you see within the website are dictated by your likes and dislikes. Thank you for liking Ipofil and therefore you may, I think, by algorithm it will <laughs> bring you to other similar or related sites and the things that you view online. All, to all told, however, the disruptive nature of the 4IR leads to profound effects on jobs and skills matching, innovation, productivity, and the economy, inequality, security and conflict, businesses, technologies, and ethics and identity. Even governance is affected too and the intellectual property system itself and the intellectual property office as the regulator of the system are not exempt. 
So what has intellectual property got to do with all the fuss about the 4IR? Or even industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and now 4.0. What is it with these new technologies that's got, that has got everybody talking? Intellectual property system, ladies and gentlemen, is a driver that propels all these industrial advancements that we have seen. A quick run through the different rights afforded by the intellectual property system shows how uh, this can be used as a tool for economic growth and social development and well-being. Let us start with inventions being the core of the four IR. So what is an invention? It is any technical solution to a problem in any field of human activity. Every new technology born out of the minds of creative and innovative thinkers has a potential to be able to solve problems that humanity is facing. Patent protection is available for inventions that are new, industrially applicable, and those that involve inventive step. For instance, uh, patents that have been um, patents have been granted for for self-driving cars, and lately, on Google's uh, soft self-driving car. Uber Technologies is also the recipient of many U.S. patents, mostly relating to transport service, network, messaging, and guided routes. But they also have for ride sharing, data collection, call interaction, and security. Alternatively, a patent invention, which may not have an inventive step, may fall under a utility model protection. This is where the Philippines uh, is very strong at, utility model protection. And uh, I think uh, this has been reflected in the Global Innovation Index that, uh, that are released annually. So uh, the, we are, while we are very strong in utility model where an inventive step may or may not be present, we are falling slow on invention. I'll tell you, well, the reason is that the, the edu educational system is not really geared towards uh, science and technology, is not yet strong on that. We have very low R&D budget, as you know. So um, our inventors, scientists, and researchers uh, opt for the utility model route, which is easily obtained by mere registration with our office, has, uh, so has a shorter turnaround time insofar as our uh, grants are concerned as against patent invention where our grant, our turnaround time for that is around 46 to 47 months as against six months for utility model. This is also, um, we, uh, we were trying to analyze why would uh, our um, researchers opt for this utility model protection, even if there, there may be, may be um, potential for invention, which provides for a longer protection of 20 years. Um, we also, uh, the, the general academic uh, environment or policy is publish or perish which is quite against the intellectual property 
concept of file per first the invention, protect first before publishing. So what is, there is, seems to be a disconnect, strong disconnect between the intellectual property system and that of, uh, and that of the practice in the academic circle <coughs> and the R&D circle. What is our solution? Ah, may slide daw ako noon. So I'll come back to that later. Five minutes to go. <laughs> so, so may I just send you my, <laughs> my PowerPoint? So okay, we have uh, we have trade secrets. By the way, where you, if you don't wish to have uh, to apply for patent, then you may just keep your um, information a secret, so long as uh, there is value in it and uh, it is used for it has commercial value in it, and you keep it a secret for a long time. You also have trademarks, which is also within our realm. Um, then we have uh, graphical user interfaces of applications and computer programs, which allows for protection as industrial designs. And then, of course, copyright, where I think most of you are also interested in this, which uh, governs the protection of literary and artistic works. Your manuals, how-tos, frequently asked questions, music, audiovisual, um, are protected by copyright. Now, for the, for the fourth industrial revolution, this, this is uh, relevant. Software or computer programs also are generally protected by means of copyright. All told, one can easily see how the system can be utilized to protect IP-generated uh, assets. Especially now that inventions have become more and more sophisticated because, because of the use of cy cyberspace. In fact, statistics from the World Intellectual Property Organization, or the WIPO, filed internationally uh, patent uh, inventions filed under the patent cooperation system. This is where there is a single application for invention and uh, you may designate as many countries that are signatories to the treaty in one application. Rather than going individually to each and every country. So uh, the Philippines is a member of the Patent Cooperation Treaty or the PCT. So um, statistics for 2017 show that uh, we have 243,500 total applications using that PCT route uh, in the following fields. The top five fields with computer technology and digital communication taking the lead. So of the 243,500 applications, we have almost 20,000 on computer technology, followed by digital communication, electrical, machinery apparatus, uh, energy, then medical technology, and measurement. So likewise, it would seem that there's a race among those creating in the fields of computer technologies and the digital communications in the filing of PCT applications. So topping the list, of course, are those coming from China. Huawei had overtaken uh, ZTE in the filing of patent. Then we have Intel, which is a US uh, brand. Mitsubishi, Japanese brand. Qualcomm is US, LGE, BOE, Samsung, Sony, and LM Ericsson. 
what are the opportunities, challenges, risks um, in the, uh, for IRR and its emerging technologies? Needless to say, this same revolution that brings emerging and disruptive technologies is challenging the intellectual property system to step up and keep a pace with these new developments. There are a number of policy issues that need to be revisited if the IP system would remain relevant in the 4IR. So um, the rationale behind the IP system, why do we even bother promoting and protecting intellectual property? The, uh, WIPO offers a few reasons. Number one, the progress and well-being of humanity rests on its cap capacity to create and invent new works in the area of technology and culture. How many minutes? Two minutes? Five? Five. And um, the legal protection of new uh, creations encourages the commitment of additional resources for further innovation and the promotion and protection of IP spurs economic development, creates new, job, new jobs and industries and enhances the quality and enjoyment of life. In fact, in the Philippines, IP contributes to the GDP and employment. We had a um, study conducted on copyright-based industries in 2010 where the study showed that 7.34% of the GDP, uh, where uh, copyright-based industries contributed to 7.34% of GDP from 4.32 in 1999. So um, also in another study, uh, trademark intensive industries shows, uh, the study shows that direct contribution to the GDP is 17%, while indirect is 41%. Next, please. Why is this 2010 again? Ah, employment. Uh, the, the contribution to employment is 14.14%. For those coming from the copyright-based industries, for trademark intensive, 15 percent, with uh, 30 percent, um, where, where this 15 percent is said to provide 30 percent premium to um, over what the other non-trademark in, in, uh, trademark uh, companies give to employees. Next, please. Dito na lang ako susunod. <laughs> creation. So uh, we have a spectrum uh, from creation, protection, utilization, and enforcement. Utilization or commercialization. So uh, the intellectual property office covers the entire spectrum. You used to uh, know us know that the intellectual property office, that they were called uh, Philippine Patent Office. In fact, up to this point, there are some um, bottles or some uh, products where I see patent pending Philippine Patent Office. Matagal na yon, 30 years ago yung Philippine Patent Office. So I, <laughs> I had a call uh, to the manufacturers, can you please update your, your law or um, your announcement? So, we used to be known as a regulatory agency only, granting patents, granting, uh, registering trademarks. But under the Intellectual Property Code, with our development-oriented um, vision, and also it, it's part of uh, what is uh, provided for by law, we cover from creativity, uh, we have programs from creativity, innovation, down to enforcement. That's why, uh, kung hindi kilala ang IPO dati, ngayon, dapat makilala na kasi sa simula pa lang, we have programs that should promote creativity and innovation. 
since I don't have much time to discuss, um, you can visit our website uh, to look into this. Um, we are also now looking at, uh, we're able to make some breakthroughs already with the DepEd and CHED. Although CHED, we had uh, partnered with them, partnered with them before. Kaya uh, lang, many of, uh, some of the CHED um, in uh, SOCs are, or have IP policies already, I mean, a few. We have, uh, we are supporting, we are supporting around 85 universities R and R&D institutions. We are capacitating them to do prior art search. Ito po tinitingnan kung luma o bago ang bago ang mga applications na sinasubmit. And also, um, uh, patent drafting. Next, please. Next slide. Uh, copyright na to. You're saying that the next Rembrandt, uh, but the most alarming issue that uh, is that uh, artificial intelligence can now create literary and artistic works and legal precepts, legal concepts of authorship, ownership, and personality are forced to be revisited. The next Rembrandt won two Grand Prix at Cannes in cyber and creative data. In here, artificial intelligence was able to 3D print a Rembrandt-style painting after having been fed data extracted from the paintings of the Dutch painter Rembrandt. So, in the field of IP, the following questions have to be asked. Who owns the copyright of the work? The answer would be easy if it were a human being who did the work. But where the author is a computer program, who would own the copyright? Now, that, now what if the artificial intelligence were to create a patentable invention? Would the answer remain the same? All told, can they be granted authorship? and inventorship status? Should they be granted the right to own intellectual property? While the policy debate is yet unsettled at this point, what is emerging is that the authorial right of AI work may be any one of the following. The software, software's programmer, the software's user, the software itself. It is from these three where the creative aspects of AI output are likely to originate. Next, please. Um, I think we can skip that. Next. Enforcement. Where IP rights are violated, the owner through the proper government agencies may opt to run after the infringers and avail of remedies provided by law. Perhaps this is the most uh, threatened in the IP system with the advent of all the industrial revolutions and more so today as the world becomes smaller and smaller and uh, borderless. Electronic commerce for one enables people to purchase, sell, and uh, sell transactions with just a click of the mouse or a tap of a screen. More con made convenient by ICT, e-commerce eliminates the need to physically go to the shop for a vendor and pick out uh, the items to take home. So, uh, for the unscrupulous people, however, they use this platform to deceive people and perpetuate the proliferation of counterfeit and pirated goods, which unduly affects, which could unduly affect uh, public health and safety, especially if this involves medicine and uh, some spare parts for mm, your motor vehicles or perhaps uh, electrical lightings. On the flip side of the coin, however, the power of 4IR can be harvested to facilitate enforcement and litigation. Blockchain had recently been used in China um, 
uh, where this was allowed, uh, the blockchain technology was allowed to authenticate evidence. So, um, now where do we go? Next, please. Dealing with a 4IR IP perspective. We are um, dealing with hundreds of, uh, or millions of data. Millions of applications and database. For a single application, our patent examiners would need to scour the existing databases to see if the, the present invention being applied for is new. And we need to refer to a huge amount of databases. And the, we are also um, looking at better quality. It is also um, important to come up with quality patent because uh, you are providing exclusivity to an applicant to prevent the public and anyone for 20 years from manufacturing, selling, uh, importing, and using the, the invention. So the office, the intellectual property office must look intently and seriously into each and every application. And an application, mind you, is not just a single piece of paper, not even 10. The protection lies in the claims. What is the inventor claiming as his exclusive rights? And this referred to highly technical issues. I'm saying this because you know that there is the ease of doing business law where all government agencies, including the intellectual property office, is mandated to um, comply with. It is humanly impossible for us to come out with a, a decision for patent grant or refusal within 20 days, not even 40 days. As I said earlier, our examination period for um, uh, invention is like four years, and this is international standard. This is not because we are slow. There is a, even the Patent Cooperation Treaty has a procedure, and it's not 20 days, it's not 40 days. This alarms our um, applicants when they've learned about the EODB being applied to us. So we are trying to um, figure out how we can squeeze, uh, how, how we can uh, 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 take out our core function from the EODB uh, timeline. We recognize that there are other transactions where we can come up in three days, seven days, 20 days, and we have identified them already, but not patent examination. It's highly technical. Yes, the law EODB says highly technical, but we, I, I, I describe our technical um, uh, work as overly, extremely, highly technical. Wala kong ganun sa batas. Sinabi lang po, highly tech, ah, sinabi lang po, highly technical. Pwedeng, when you, um, when you have to grant uh, a building permit, pag tiningnan mo yung plano at yung mga technical description, madali yun, technical yun. That's, wala po sa kalingkingan po ng technical um, solutions or technical uh, examinations that the patent examiners are looking at. And our, um, and our benchmark is not really uh, local offices, local uh, government agencies. Our benchmark are other IP offices outside of the Philippines. Are we competitive with other countries in terms of our disposal of our grants? Hindi po, wala po, you will agree with me na wala po ibang intellectual property office sa Pilipinas. Iisa lang po. So hindi po pwede kaming i-compare 
sa LGU na naglalabas po ng business permit. Malayong malayo po. Iko-compare nyo po tayo dapat sa, sa Malaysia, anong ginagawa ni Malaysia, ni Thailand, ni Singapore. Mabilis po ba tayo o mahina? So ito po isang example po ng aming application. File wrapper. Some of the claims run up to hundreds of claims. And tinitingnan po, ang pag sinabi pong claims, hindi po ito yung ordinary claims. It's a technical claim in, in IPO field. So, that's counted as one application. Basahin lang po yan. Siguradong kulang po ang 20 days. Okay, um, next please. So, better quality. Reduce administrative costs for us to be able to, to use AI. These are the things that we want to address. Okay, next please. Okay, next. Oh, ito na yung example. Sa so 3.1 world patent applications in 2016, ito po yung direct route, PCT I mentioned to 33. Yan lang po yung binanggit ng WIPO. Hindi po sinabi. Minus ko lang po. This minus that, ito po ang direct route. All 2.80. Uh, 2.9 million go to each and every country. I mean, combination na yan. Wala pong database na, wala pong, isa po pong database na kailangang tingnan ng patent examiner. So, sa 233 PCT applications, 25% are coming from the US, 19 from Japan, and uh, 18 from China. Ito po tayo, Philippines. Okay, next please. Next please. Ito lang. Makikita po natin the uh, patent filings by residents. Hindi pa sinabi kung Filipino. Uh, I'm trying to ask my office to dissect, no? to break down the residents. Pwede kasing resident na foreign eh. Foreigner. Ito po. We're try We're... We're quite stable. When you see that uh, China, by the way, had uh, recent, had uh, overtaken Ameri uh, the U.S. being the highest patent filer, China had tremendously shoot up. Ano na tayo? Takeaways? Key takeaways? Please, next. Key takeaways? Um, we must remember that AI are just tools, just like any other invention. So, uh, what at this point, what do we do? First is acceptance. For IRR, for IR is a reality, and we have to accept and be prepared for it. Robots are coming, and they will be taking our jobs. Not all, by the way. <laughs> because those that are more likely to be automated are those involving repetitive manual labor, like assembling cars and other objects, but also repetitive intellectual work, such as telemarketing, uh, preparation of tax returns, insurance appraisals, and officiating uh, sports, among others. On the other hand, those least likely to be automated are those that are high-income cognitive jobs, such as physicians and surgeons, psychologists, among others, and creative jobs, such as those involving choreography and music. So recommendation for further um, policy consideration. From the standpoint of policy researchers and policy makers like you, there just uh, appears to be a need to rethink or reassess our national policy and education and educational system. How do we ensure through our educational system that our children and students get an education that does not become obsolete? in future world of artificial intelligence and complex computing. For those already in the workplace, how do we reprogram our labor policies to ensure that we extend to them the opportunity to get a retooling of their skills with able assistance from government? Those are issues which you, my dear audience, are in the position to study and uh, decide and implement. What about copyright? Mabilis lang copyright. 
do I need to discuss the copyright quickly? Copyright part. <laughs> A lot. Um, the issue on cap I think the, the issue you wanted to know is that um, uh, we're now shifting right to copyright. <laughs> Forget the four IR. Um, you are researchers and you use open access. You open, uh, open, uh, open access um, materials, which may be local and foreign, in whatever medium, digital, printed. <coughs> the copyright, the copyright, um, the, the, pro the issue is these are published works. Published works, nas ano yon? And uh, copyright is not an absolute right, as you know. There are limitations. Therefore, let's look at this uh, from the author's point of view. You are authors yourselves. You are heavy into writing, so you have copyright over those materials, we'll just have to clarify. If you are um, a government employee and your uh, regular duty is to write, you have no copyright over the things that you write. Neither does, if, if your office is also, uh, so if your office is a government agency, government agencies do not own copyright, except when these are assigned to the government agencies. Okay? If you were, uh, if you, you are part of a government agency, but your regular work is not really writing. You have been assigned an added task. You own, you are supposed to own the copyright under the intellectual property code. Unless you have an IP policy which says otherwise. Na, nang kukuha nyo. Kung writer talaga kayo, researcher, dun sa office, Kayo ay um, nagpo-produce talaga ng may di research division kayo. Regular part, regular duty nyo yun. Wala kayong copyright po doon. Wala rin pong copyright yung government agency which is supposed to produce those uh, research works. But if you have been assigned, as I, I, this is just a repetition, if you have been assigned and you're not a researcher, you are um, ano, secretary, ang galing-galing pala nyo magsulat. Pinasulat nung report. Dapat po, well, may copyright po yung uh, may ad hoc. Pa, pa, paano ngayon magkakaroon ng di may copyright? Eh di, pwede niya ngayon kontrolin. Ay, hindi niyo pwedeng i-publish yan. Kasi ako ang may-ari niyan. Pinadrawing yung artist, for example. No? Dapat po ipa-assign ninyo sa agency. Only then will the agency be able to acquire copyright by assignment or licensing. Okay? Nag-gets nag na po. Now, sa open access, ginagumagamit kayo ng mga uh, local materials. Eh, ganun din po. In the same manner that you have rights, the, the, author, the authors of the materials that you're using for your research also have their own respective copyrights. So, in the same manner that you would wish that your uh, works would also be uh, recognized, at, at, there should be attribution to you as the author of your work, ganun din po sa kabila, di ho ba? That's logical. Now, um, pag foreign books yan, foreign books, um, dapat member ng Bern Convention for for uh, the author to have protection under our law. Ang members ng Bern Convention po, i-Google na lang po natin. 
So uh, these are the rights of uh, an author, no? Rights of reproduction, um, transformation of the work, first public distribution, rental, public display, first uh, public performance, and other communication to the public. Ito pong seven na to, other communication to the public, dyan po papasok yung, um, that's where the internet, use of internet uh, will come in. The access to works that are made available to the public by wire or wireless means. So, pasok po ang internet. So, um, pag in-import yung books, meron, meron bang limitation? Is there a limitation to the number of books that you can bring in to the Philippines? You are the, you are, you're not an importer, huh? You were just, you know, you, you came from a meeting and uh, you saw from the, you wanted to buy from the Changi Airport, Changi Airport um, books. How much can, how many of this can you bring in? There is no limitation under the IP code anymore. Except that, be careful with the customs duties kasi baka meron po silang limitation. In so far as the intellectual property code is concerned, there is no limit. Okay? But as I said, be careful with customs duties and uh, uh, tariff. Malinaw na po siguro yung mga issues, no? Later on, perhaps. Okay. I think, sorry about uh, taking more than what is necessary assigned to me uh, for, for this lecture, but uh, I know that there are still many questions in your mind, and I'll be uh, happy to answer them if there's still time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Director uh, General Santiago, for your very comprehensive presentation. Um, well, uh, I think some of you may have uh, no, questions to our uh, resource speakers. Unfortunately, we don't have any more time for an open forum. So what uh, I can suggest is that if you have questions or comments, please uh, forward them to us, and we would gladly um, email them to our presenters so they can get in touch with you, okay? And with the permission of our uh, three resource speakers, we will um, post your, we will, up, we will upload your PowerPoint presentations, <laughs> kung pwede, in, uh, in the SERP and PIDS website. So for, for the benefit of our participants as well as uh, those who would like to have a copy of your respective presentations. Okay? So, sumesen niya si ma'am. Ay, may t-shirt daw siyang dala. Dumating na po ang mga t-shirt from the Intellectual Property Office. Ah, okay. Perhaps we can do that during the lunch break, ma'am? Okay. So at this point, uh, I would like to um, call on our, um, well, each of our resource speakers because we have something for you from our uh, from the PIDS, and I would like to call on the president of PIDS for uh, the awarding of uh, tokens and certificates of appreciation to our resource speakers. Jess. Um, may we call um, Ms. Luisa Galisan? I, to award uh, the certificate, uh, let me read the content. Um, Fil the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and the Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines, SERPI Project, presents this certificate of appreciation to Ms. Luisa Galisan for imparting her invaluable knowledge and expertise during the fifth SERPI biennial meeting with the theme, Gearing Up for SERPI. Given this 10th day of December 2018 at the PIDS Conference Hall, 18th floor, Cyberpod, uh, Centris, Quezon Ave, Quezon City. Signed by Dr. C Sheila VCR, SERPI Project Manager, and Dr. Celia M. Reyes, PIDS President.
Uh, the same certificate po to Mr. Patrick Salamat. And to Attorney Josephine R. Santiago. gagawin but uh, for now let us break for lunch no lunch is served outside well you can of course bring your 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 lunch here inside and uh, during the lunch break we will have um, some presentations from PIDS on other our other online initiatives but we can do that later once you have already uh, um, have taken your food okay so thank you very much and at this point, before we leave, please join me in thanking all our three our three resource speakers for their excellent presentations. Marami pong salamat and see you um, for the rest of the presentations, for the rest of the meeting. Okay, so mag-group picture muna po tayo before po tayo lumabas. Yes, yes.